Uh, we wish sustainability was a focus a long, long time ago. Uh, in fact, more than 30 years back, Time Magazine wrote an article and, and said that we need to, there's a need for the world to act, but as a world, we didn't act. Um, and, and it took us so long until the Paris Agreement came by in 2015 and more recently uh, with, with various documentaries and, and positions, as you, as you rightly mentioned, Professor, that uh, as part of the EU and the EU uh, Green Deal and various other, other countries also doing similar or net zero, for example, China by 20, 2060 going into net zero and many companies embarking on the, on the net zero transition, either by maximum by 2050 or sometime earlier, even by 2040. So climate has taken a, 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 very, a very strong focus and climate is it's also a technical topic uh, and, and it's well suited for, for people um, such as you as engineers coming in um, because there are lots of science behind, behind this. Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a topic that could be easily navigated into and easily forayed into. Um, yes, it could come across as too big, too complex when you first look at it, but the more you start digging into it, the more simpler it gets. And you would ask the question, why didn't I get into this much earlier? Um, so the first thing is it needs to be a part of the curriculum itself. Um, so within, within your academic program itself, uh, take electives, take special courses, et cetera, that link directly or indirectly to environmental sustainability, or even from a social, social side of things so that you understand the context. Uh, but also look at it more, more at the broader level. There are various consulting companies uh, creating those papers, fusion papers, et cetera, around climate and climate-related aspects that you, you can do the reading about. And, and from, from as a fresh graduate, um, uh, the, the easiest thing um, when I joined um, various companies um, soon after my engineering, the easiest way was the, was the internship program. So look and seek out the risk or the high risk projects or high risk roles upfront um, that, that would satisfy you and you have tried it out. And before you go back and say that, okay, money is one of the biggest differentiator or something else or work-life balance, which doesn't exist, it's more work-life harmony. Uh, so, 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 so really look into explore the role of internship and see what companies, because every company, every Fortune 500 company is doing this, um, but the depth matters and the width matters of the topics that they, they, that they look into. Um, and there'll be more and more roles coming in the space, either as, um, as a niche space or as a contributing factor. You could be doing finance or that would contribute to this, or you could be doing supply management and that would contribute to it, or you'll be doing control systems and new system design, but can you build that from a sustainability, through a sustainability lens? by low carbon, by, by better design products or materials being used that are also low carbon in, in, in nature. So everything that you do, um, whether it's a dedicated job or otherwise, look at it through the lens of uh, sustainability and climate and see what, what could be done. And, and um, I'm sure you will succeed. So, 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 so there's no doubt about that, but it's, that it's, it's not as much spoken about in the corporate circle from a job perspective but as a strategy perspective, it's spoken. So sometimes strategy leads what comes into next. So, so you should be prepared. If you are passionate about this topic, if you have done the beach cleanups around single-use plastics and others, then, then explore, this, explore this option. There's nothing stopping you. Uh, probably this decade, apart from the C word of COVID, um, I think the, the next most used terminology is the new normal and the next normal. And, and, and really looking at it is um, the next normal is not the post-COVID normal because then it, it's still several times away, several years, months away. So the next normal is the normal that we are already living in right now with COVID-19. Uh, so that itself is a, is a huge um, new normal. A lot of things have happened um, in, the, in the world, at least in the, last, uh, in the last few months, that is significantly disrupted, as you're no doubt aware, from an office space environment to a manufacturing environment to a school or university offering offline learning, uh, when, when naturally the tendency is to, to be in schools or in hospitals, um, et cetera, et cetera. So, so um, yes, some businesses or some industries have thrived and have outperformed the others who benefited from this, while the others have taken a hit 
um, around 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 this this aspect. It also depends on which sector is that mid professional into, and therefore what could be done. Because if your revenues are dropping, as a business that's getting impacted, and your cost still remains high, the cost needs to adapt itself to the revenues. Because revenues can drop very fast, but the cost takes longer time to adapt. Um, so there are lots of transition and restructuring and transformations will happen and are continuing to happen in some some in some companies and this will this will once again accelerate. So so ultimately it really boils down to what's the value that you as an individual are creating to the company. Ask yourself that question and and see is the company benefiting from that value, um, and where the company values you as well as you feel valued. So you are a valuable resource, but your opinions, your thoughts, your contributions are also valued. Um, so, so if it's if if that exists, then of course it's it's a fantastic environment to be in. If it doesn't exist, then it's time to 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 look at other other opportunities. So the other opportunities are difficult in this in this environment. So the natural tendency is to move into industries that are performing better, but still needs the same type of skill sets or there's a need to transform the skill set to move into a different world. So, so typically you would need to change three different things. At least one of the three is the easiest to change. Two of the three is more difficult, but if you change all three of three, um, probably you are doing wonders. So one is location. Are you willing to change location to go into another country space, um, space meaning not the outer space, but another, another region um, where, um, it is less impacted and therefore what you could contribute. The second thing is, are you okay to move your function? You could be marketing currently. Could you move into innovation as a, as a team? You could be in IT currently. Could you move into digital as a, as, a, as a topic and so on? So changing function. The third thing is changing industry or sector. So you are in pharma and you want to go into tech. Um, so what does, what does that mean? Are you in tech and you want to, you're done with the tech and you said, I've had enough. I want to contribute from an investment perspective, going to VC or something. So changing all three would be the would be the most one, but all three at the same time makes it even more difficult in the current context. Typically, it's one or two of the three that you that you end up changing. Another way is, uh, like I said, I did my MBA during the last financial crisis, so it's a good time to do some to advance your capabilities by taking up various trainings or learning programs that could give you this, this transformatory step to embark, to change all three. Because um, that's what I did when I finished my MBA. I, ch I changed from India, moved to France, change of location, change of function from tech, I moved into sustainability industry. Once again, from tech, I moved into food services and facility management. It was difficult at that point in time. So nothing is impossible. Never say never again. Um, and and um, I'm sure you'll succeed as a as a mid level uh, as a mid professional as uh, as professor calls it. So um, so one thing is really who you are. How much of risk are you willing to take? How far are you willing to go with that with that risk um, and so on? So one is fully your 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 personality, your characteristics, your behavior, your, your appetite for risk and reward as, as well. But the second thing is what I'll, 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 I'll focus on, what exists from a sustainability space, uh, because that was a question um, for, for entrepreneurs. There are lots of things happening um, in, this, in this space because the topic is so new, because of all the innovations that have been put or are being put into thought through to achieve the, like I mentioned, the EU Green Deal, or to achieve net zero, or to move into more sustainable food options like sustainable protein, uh, or the variety in food options, for example. There are lots of circular economy from, from materials. There are lots and lots of uh, various aspects. Um, most, of them, most of them so far at our, are at the initial stages, um, I would say, not, not, um, not really meant for scale, or it was designed for scale, but taking it to scale um, for example, is proving to be a challenge, like chemical recycling for for in the circular economy. Uh, but yes, uh, uh, great inroads are being made. So from a purely from a science perspective and an engineering perspective, and and the business case behind climate um, climate as a topic itself, including circular economy, biodiversity, and others, there's a lot of um, uh, there's a lot of potential to make 
uh, top line as well as bottom line um, uh, impact in this. Um, once again, the, the numbers goes into several bil billions of euros. I will not quote the exact number, but all you know is that there's big money out there and governments are putting money into, into play in infrastructure, change in utility and so on. Uh, be it renewable energy or 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 hydrogen or or other means. So so pick up a topic that really interests you first, and pick up a topic where you think you will make money. Not not a great idea, but where the business case exists, the business case needs to be there. Sustainability, yes, it's a sustainability innovation, but it also has to be a sustainable business. Uh, otherwise, it becomes philanthropy uh, or or a loss making process. That's not the idea. The idea is, is to look and seek out for, for opportunities out there in the world, and there are plenty. Just taking a topic like food loss and food waste itself, um, there's a report, Better better Business, Better World, um, that came out uh, some time back, and almost 300 billion, 300 billion per year to be made from 2030 onwards on food loss and food waste-related innovations. Uh, so... so um, if you look at a restaurant business, for example, or a food, you go to a restaurant, um, they're all thinking about making sure that meal that they provide you is fantastic to delight you as a customer. But if they had to focus on the food waste side, because then uh, there's an impact on the climate, because food waste is one of the biggest environmental contributors to climate. Uh, if food waste were a country, it would be the third biggest country in the world uh, when it comes to carbon emissions. So huge impact. But yet food waste has a food cost also impact because if you reduce anything that is not being wasted, there's a savings on cost. And compare just not just the raw material cost, but the cost of labor to prepare the food that is being ultimately being thrown away, the energy that is being used to refrigerate or to, or to prepare that. So all of that and the, and the waste hauling or the waste treatment or, or other costs. So, so just by looking at food waste and therefore food loss that happens from harvest till here, um, together, it's almost a 290 to a 300 billion per year in additional uh, opportunities that could be raised. So, so that's just in one topic. So if you pick off the many hundreds of topics that exist on sustainability and what could be, what could be done, the potential is huge. But make sure it needs to make money. So that should be, that should be the focus. Is the, is the spirit of resilience. Um, and, and you only spoke about supply chain and, and everything linked to that, uh, at least from the company that I represent, although I'm talking today from, from my own personal standpoint and not a representation of the company itself. I'd like to say that um, the idea of resilience should start upfront. It's not when a crisis is happening or after the crisis is happening, what do we, what do, we do? That anyway will, will happen, but the first and foremost is the preparedness for the crisis. So as an organization, uh, what could be done to prepare better for a supply chain disruption of the nature that we have seen so far? And, and uh, once again, as an organization, my organization was better prepared, not exactly for this crisis because not everyone knew, but for a crisis. And, and, and everything was built in such a way. So an example is ensuring that the supply chain is diversified. So not just buying from a, a small group of big suppliers, but how do you diversify that in a way that there are competent and, and, and suppliers who meet the required standards, but coming from very different businesses. So it could be small, medium scale enterprises, small older farmers, women owned businesses, minority owned businesses, et cetera, along with the, the larger businesses that uh, that provide food raw materials as well as facility management raw materials to to the organization that I represent. So we put that as a part of a strategy itself long before and said that 10 billion of our business value will come from these businesses. And by adding them into the mix, it, it made Sodexo, the company that I am part of now, uh, much more resilient to handle such uh, bullweb effect or such fluctuations in, in supply demand um, that is happening. So we were able to quickly tap into local suppliers, local players, uh, smallholders, and, and to seek their support to address the shortfall that was potentially coming from somewhere else. So that's, that's so diversification as a stra strategy helped in, um, helped better prepare our, our resilience. I would, I would just focus on that.
So Better Tomorrow 2025 is Sodexo's corporate responsibility roadmap. Um, it was drafted 10 years back when I was based in Paris uh, and just joined, joined Sodexo. So it gives a holistic strategy on what are the focus topics that we as a company, knowing our capabilities and our expertise and our skills, would focus on. Um, because earlier we were focusing on many different things and we wanted to really focus. Uh, for example, sometimes we are donating blood and calling it corporate responsibility or sustainability. But is that the best that Sodexo as a company could do um, in, in creating greater environmental as well as social impact? So we prioritized those topics and said that what are the ones that we will focus on? And there were already a lot of them. So, so, so Better Tomorrow 2025 gives a lot of structure into what our focus topics are around responsible sourcing, around sustainable food, around climate and carbon, around uh, circular economy, creating a social impact, the 10 million euros I spoke about, as well as contributing to um, a world that is free of hunger uh, by addressing food insecurity in the population. They're a target of 100 million people to be impacted by 2025. On food waste, once again, uh, reducing food waste by 50% by, by 2025. So all these are commitments and targets. And what we are doing internally is against that strategy. Are we close to that target? Are we away from the target? How close are we? Are we meeting that? Through a, through a proper management reporting, uh, as well as governance, to ensure that all those that we said as public are, are maintained and done. Of course, some of them were impacted significantly because of the, of the current COVID situation that we are in. Uh, an example would be, the trans, uh, while, while we are making many of our operations move towards uh, moving away from single-use plastic waste, and moving, using more reusable, and suddenly the COVID-19 brought single-use plastic disposables uh, to be used for food services operations uh, more frequent. So it pushed us back some um, a few months or a few years in our, in our rollout, but we realized that was essential in the, in the early days. But later on, we changed that to use reusable items or more sustainable alternate disposables than, than the, the more traditional single-use plastic. So, so this is one example of how the current normal or the new normal or next normal has, has shifted and, and sometimes pushed it back, but sometimes it helps us accelerate some of those transitions, especially our contributions around, around corporate responsibility in creating a social impact. For example, in India, we touched almost 1 million people through the services that we rendered, um, especially the migrants, the daily wage laborers or workers uh, who are moving from one place to another. So we provide them with food as a service, uh, um, as part of a philanthropic contribution, as well as in partnership with uh, Feeding India, as well as uh, the Indian Food Banking uh, Network. So, so once again, some examples where uh, we accelerated. So we all know the saying, doing well by doing good. So doing well means you're doing well profitably, by, and at the same time doing good from environmental social impact. Uh, but what happens if you don't do well from a, from a financial standpoint? And that's what this year showed us, um, is that um, then you can differentiate the companies and the purpose behind the companies and are they genuine in their sustainability aspects? Uh, at least the organization that I represent, um, uh, even though we didn't do as well, So first of all, I'm, I'm no person to, to evangelize and to spread what is right, what is wrong. But, but the key part here is in every little thing that we do, um, look at it from a sustainability lens because our kids, our children, they're all asking about, about the same in their lives because they're learning it in school. They come back, they see it at home and it's not there. They challenge your shopping behavior. Are you wasting too much food? Are you buying too much than necessary? Uh, are you going hungry shopping, which means naturally you end up buying more food? Are you, are you not doing a few other things from a sustainability perspective? So, so um, the, the ask is look, look at everything through a sustainability lens, however small they might be. And, and that contribution is being watched by someone else and that could impact their lives at a subconscious level. So, so that's the only ask. Look at things through sustainability as a lens, see what you could do, what you cannot do and you cannot do. But what you could do, take that one step forward and say, I could do this um, and, and, and make a conscious effort. That's all. Thank you, Professor.